is great sound. Quality. I am Chris from Future Music, and we're here with Lev on the really Universal Audio stand uh, to look at the new Apollo 16. So, hand you over to Lev and he'll tell us a bit more about it. So, last year we showed and shipped Apollo. Uh, Apollo was the interface that had basically everything built in. It had great sounding quality uh, conversion, uh, U80 processing on board, and Thunderbolt. Uh, at MESA, we're showing off Apollo 16, which is the newest addition to the family. Uh, same sound quality and general you know, vibe as Apollo, but we stripped it, you know, everything away and it's just 16 analog inputs and outputs, no mic preamps, no headphone outs, you know, really targeted at the professional customer who has an investment in a console, uh, you know, maybe a summing mixer, outboard mic preamps or outboard effects. Really great addition to a hybrid studio that wants to mix in the box but use their analog equipment. Um, of course, real-time UAD processing on board, a quad processor. Uh, and of course, it's a uh, Thunderbolt ready device, FireWire 800 also uh, built in. And again, you'll be able to use this on Mac, PC, and it's all 64-bit. Uh, some of the other interesting things about it from a functional standpoint, um, a new software application, a new version of the console, um, a lot more routability on Apollo 16. Uh, so all the 16 inputs show up as input strips, just like Apollo. But there's a new feature that we're going to be releasing in our next version of software coming in Q2 called Virtual I.O. Now, Virtual I.O. is just outputs from the DAW that come right into the console. So really great for virtual instruments. If you want to play them in low latency through real-time UAD processing, you can do that. That feature will also get uh, added to the Apollo uh, console. So the original Apollo and Apollo 16 will have this Virtual I.O. feature. Um, we showed a little preview of this at NAMM where we've got a great new send interface. It's basically a small fader as opposed to the little knobs that we used to have. So you can see all of your sends. Now, Apollo 16 has two additional Q buses. You know, you used to have headphone one and headphone two on Apollo. Uh, Apollo 16 has four proper Qs, and the Qs show up in this little matrix over here. And the cool thing about the Qs is you can route them to any output. So if you go over to Q1, you can see you can route to any of the analog outputs or the ASCBU digital output. So what's really great is you have the ability to take any of the analog inputs, send them to any analog output, or take any uh, output from your DAW into uh, real-time UAD processing to the console uh, and to any output, or just to monitor it through the main outs. So a little bit more flexibility in the routing, uh, a lot more analog I.O. Uh, and then also, last but not least, we've got scalability. So you're going to be able to have one or two Apollo 16s in a forthcoming version of software. But it doesn't connect to the original Apollo, that's right. Yeah, good question. So at launch, we're only supporting two Apollos or two Apollo 16s in a single system. Um, you know, we're, we're definitely monitoring the forums. People are asking us to be able to do that. We'll definitely look at that. But right now, there's no, there's no, there's no functionality. And it's a cord in, a cord in their standard. Correct. So in the, in the, in the original Apollo, it's duo and quad yeah. processing. Apollo 16 is quad only. So can we expect like an octo in there at some point? Maybe yeah, that's a really good question. Yeah. We have no plans to do an octo. You know, that was the big like speculation on the forums, and that's you know we welcome the speculation. But you know the, the reason that we could do an octo on the PCIe card is because we've got an FPGA there, and it's just talking to the okay. ATSPs. With Apollo products, it's got the four DSPs and all the I/O. So we use up all those pins. We don't really have the ability today to do any kind of an octo version of Apollo. And uh, with this sort of progression of the console system and how this is working, you guys can't be too far off a door now, a full-fledged door. I mean, you know, that's that's another fun thing. We have no plans to do. <laughs> you know, honestly, we 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 really uh, appreciate all the different DAW manufacturers out there. We try to work with as many as we can. Um, many people have commented that the original Apollo works better with their DAW than you know, some other interface that was touted alongside of it, maybe even ones made by the same company. And so we, we feel like that's a really good story for us. You know, The other thing that I didn't really get to into because it's a little bit down in the, in the weeds is um, we have this recall plugin. And, and the recall plugin is AUVST and RTAS, and you can put it inside your DAW, and it syncs up all of the settings of the console, and that'll work for Apollo 16 and the original Apollo. So well. file save in your DAW, and it'll pulse everything. Exactly. So okay. if you remember, like there was like you know, like reason back in the day, you had to have two different files. You yeah. save that in your yeah. Logic or Pro Tools session. So we thought, okay, let's do a little bit better. Let's put a little synchronize button in that little plugin. It automatically recalls everything in the front end, the plugins, and you're good to go. And that's when you open the project in the DAW. You don't have to do anything in here at all. Exactly. Exactly. And we had that on the original Apollo, now we've got it for Apollo 16. Well, we've done a bunch of cleanup on the console and how it works. It's a much cleaner user experience. Um, we have our little uh, file menu here where if you synchronize a session, meaning you open up a 
a Pro Tools session, say, with that, uh, with the recall plugin, it'll tell you, like, sync session. So you know it's a little bit cleaner than the old implementation. So everything about the console got overhauled for both products, new UI, uh, better metering, the new Sends interface, uh, and obviously Apollo 16 is all new. So take us through the front panel, very simple on this device in comparison. Indeed. So. Starting on the left-hand side, we've got the meter switch. Now, the meter switch will actually toggle all 16 of these meters between the analog inputs and the outputs, so a really nice feature. If you're doing cue mixes, you pop it to output, and you can see all the levels that you're sending to your headphone amp. Um, otherwise, if you're tracking, pop it into the, in, uh, the input setting, and you can see all the real raw inputs coming into your converter. Um, power indicator by the Universal Audio logo. Then you've got the two output meters for the monitor section. Uh, you've got the monitor knob. The monitor knob same as Apollo where you can push it and it mutes it, it turns red and you can see uh, that it's muted. And then the power switch, as you said, a very simple front panel, but one of the things that's really great about the front panel is all of the LEDs are individually shrouded. And so what that means is that you get no hotspots, no bleed. It almost looks more like a display than it does uh, you know, a bunch of LEDs. So it's again a very, very beautiful, very vibrant. Uh, you know, looking LED and you can see it from any angle. So again, great visual feedback. Are they different to the to the actual Apollo? They you look know, different. They look different, but the shipping. This is an old like pre-production Apollo. Oh, okay. We use it for trade shows. All the Apollos ship with these newer LED you know schemes that we've come up with. So taking a look at the back panel, we'll start from right to left. Uh, we've got the 16 channels of analog I/O via DB25 connectors. All inputs are uh, plus uh, plus four and minus ten switchable. 24-bit, 192 kilohertz converters, great sounding conversion. Monitor outputs on XLR, connect these directly to your monitor speakers with an XLR cable. Uh, ASCBU in and out, this is 192K single wire ASCBU, connect to any of your digital devices. One of the biggest questions we've been getting is, what's the MADI ports for? There's MADI uh, on Apollo 16, and what the MADI is for is when we have two units, that's what we actually connect to the second unit to do mixer aggregation. And because there's more cues and there's auxes and there's the monitors, we're sending a bunch of channels over MADI between two units with only a few samples of latency between the two. So very low latency interconnect between two units. Word clock I.O. as standard. Firewire 800, two ports of that as standard. Same Thunderbolt option bay as what we found on Apollo. So you can just slide in the card and it opens up PCIe performance for the plugins in your DAW. Uh, and then last is the power input. So external power supply ships with the box. Uh, and then there's an IEC cable for every region of the world that you need. So um, just, just to clarify, you can't use the you can't use the UAD effects in your door unless you've got Thunderbolt. No, they work on Firewire or oh, Thunderbolt. Okay, okay. It's um, you know, like my confusion. Now. No, I thought it's so. a, that's what I thought. But. Yeah, they totally work that way. Great question. You know, definitely um, the Firewire versus Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt has more bandwidth and has lower latency for plugins in your DAW. That's like the big benefit of going Thunderbolt. Uh, not to mention that you can plug in any other Thunderbolt device when you've got the option card because it has two ports. Um, so yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it, it makes it a little bit more like powerful and you know feel better when you hit play. Do you like need that. that Thunderbolt card to chain them, or is that on the magic? Great, great question. No, it's um, either either way. You can multi uh, multi unit either through Thunderbolt or Firewire. And the, yeah, the Maddy is for, for both modes. Re so. Retail price and when is it available? Um, it'll be available in Q2, coming okay. very soon. Um, and the price is uh, twenty nine ninety five US and very similar in euros. Okay, excellent.